What a great job. I want to take just a moment to uh, recognize these folks. Of course, Cheryl, she's come back to the choir already. She's here playing with us. Diane Seacrest, good to have her with us today. Uh, Jean Steinman, uh, Troy Kilpatrick, Richard Davis, and John Upcraft. They've come to be with us today, did a great job, and I think we're going to hear you again a little later on. So. appreciate that and let me start off by saying Merry Christmas to everybody we hope you have a wonderful Christmas day and we hope that the blessings of our Lord and Savior rest upon you throughout the year to come as well I have a few announcements that we would like to mention uh, first of all I want to remind you that tonight at 530 we have our Christmas Eve service and that will be a candlelight service so we invite you to come back and be with us for that uh, the church will be closed on the 25th naturally and also on January the 1st but we need you to pray for our youth. They're going to be going to uh, the Winter uh, Jam in St. Louis on the 27th, so keep them in your prayers. If you've not picked up your offering envelopes, they're out here on the side on a table. We encourage you to do that. And also, there are a lot of cards out there in our mailboxes. So if you've not checked on that lately, stop by and, and collect your cards there as well. And uh, that will be, a, I'm sure, a bright spot when you read all that people are wishing you Merry Christmas. A um, couple of special prayer requests we have. Uh, Becky Webb had her surgery, uh, and I, she's home now, and I think she goes back on the 3rd, if I remember correctly, Dan, and they'll be taking the drain tubes out, and they'll be getting the pathology reports back then. But right now it appears uh, that everything is going well, so we praise the Lord for that. We, we thank you for continuing to lift her, hip, lift her up in prayer and ask you to do that. And then this morning, Don Nebel had to take Angie home. She wasn't feeling very well at all. So we want to have a word of special prayer for Don and Angie as well. And if you would stand with me, please, we'll, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you today. And again, we rejoice in the goodness that you show to us each and every day of our life. The blessings that you send our way. And fathers, we come to you today, we rejoice in the remembrance of that greatest gift that was ever given, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grateful, Father, that he came, that he dwelt amongst us, 
that he went to the cross and he paid our penalty and provides for us an open door where we can spend eternity with you. And Father, we pray if there's one here today that has not put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that this would be the day that they would receive him as Lord and Savior. And Father, we think now of Becky at this time. And Father, how grateful we are that you brought her through the surgery. And we are asking, Father, in a very special way that you would continue to lay your hands of healing upon her body. And Father, we are praying that on the third, when they go back to get the results, that it will all come back. And that, Father, she will be cancer-free. We do ask, Lord, that you would bless in a very special way. Give the doctors and the nurses wisdom. And Father, we pray that you be with Becky at this time, Lord, that you give her rib just relief from the uncomfort that she's experiencing and be with her mom and dad and the family, Lord, as they continue to support her and bless them in a very special way. And Father, our heart goes out for Angie at this time. And Lord, you know she's been fighting a battle over the last year, year and a half. And Father, we're not sure exactly what the problem is today, but we know that, Lord, she's had to go home. And we are asking, Father, that you would just continue to watch over her and bless her. Praying, Father, that you would just lift her up and, Father, that you would heal her of whatever this issue and whatever this problem is. That you would restore to health and that, Father, they might be back with us very, very soon. Father, this service is yours. We are praying that you are lifted up and glorified and praying that your Holy Spirit has freedom to work and move, touch the hearts and lives of people here today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear. Luke 2, 8 through 9. The Christmas story includes a group of shepherds watching over the master's flocks on the hillside. To them it was just another night's work, another night's pay, or was it? That night those Bethlehem shepherds encountered an angel's message listened to a heavenly choir, and hurried to find a most wondrous baby. As we light this fourth candle, let us be reminded that we, like the shepherds, need to close the door on business as usual and open ourselves to divine encounters that herald the coming King. Will you bow in prayer with me? Lord, we long to experience a divine encounter with you like the unmistakable message of the angel to the shepherds. The hills outside of Bethlehem are quiet, but our lives are filled with noise and clutter. Help us to set aside business as usual so we can live the splendor of God's greatest gifts. Amen. Hallelujah, let's shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. I want to worship our Lord this morning. Let's stand to our feet. Let's sing this great carol and have joy as we sing. Joy to the world. Joy to the world.
joy this morning as we worship our King. Hallelujah. Let's give praises to our King this morning. God as we worship our King this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated. This morning, the children are going to stay here this morning for uh, the worship service. So we're going to ask our offering, those, the ushers to come forward for our offering this morning. Uh, we do want to remind you that we still, we, we can still take the money for the uh, International Mission Board, the Lottie Movement Christmas offering. And so you can do that as well as uh, our normal, regular um, offering gifts. Okay. Let us pray together. Father, we just want to thank you for this time this morning that we, we're here to worship you. We're here to give glory to you because you are the risen king. Father, we just thank you for coming and dying on the cross for us to give us that hope that we need, that joy that we can have, knowing that because of you, we can have eternal life. Father, I just pray that today as we are giving up our tithes and our offerings and and as we're uh, just offering these things before you, that we will just, just give them out and just allow you to, to work with that, to use what you, we have given you to bless this community, to bless this world. Father, thank you for the many gifts that you give us, and most of all, we thank you for Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.
we worship this morning. This service is going to take a little bit of a different turn. pastor's going to preach about and we're going to sing about the fact that it's not just about the manger. It's not just about him coming and being born, but it's about the cross as well. It's about the sacrifice he paid for our sins to give us new life and new hope. We get caught up in the pageantry of Christmas sometimes. I want that nativity scene to be perfect. I want those presents to be wrapped just right. And no matter how hard we try, sometimes we can't pull ourselves away from the glitz and the glamour. But I ask you to do that this morning. As we begin to focus on the fact that it's not just about the manger, but it's also about the cross. I want you to remember that He came as our Messiah. He came as our Savior. He came as our Father, as our friend, as our comforter, as our sustainer, as our healer. And He came as our Messiah, Lord of all. Let's stand to our feet. Let's give Him the honor that He's due. And let's sing our praises. He became sin, who knew no sin. That we might become His righteousness. He humbled Himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so
Messiah, our Savior. And He is our Emmanuel, which means God with us. And that is what we pray every morning here at Logan Street. That God would be with us. That He would flow through our building and give us strength and show His peace and His love on us. And we know that there are dark times and dark places even within our own lives. So take this moment as we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, to ask him to come, to ask him to be a part of your life, to ask him to cover those things that you wouldn't tell even the most important person in your life. Ask for God to be with us this morning. Sing with me, O come, O come. O come, O come. ask you to come. We ask you to come into our lives this morning. And we know that it can be a hard time for many people. We know that it can be a hard time to see that tree, to see those presents, to see even that nativity scene, and to think that all hope is lost because of what the world can do to us, because of what Satan can do to us, because of all the things that just weigh us down. But this morning, we are gathered here together, Lord, to say, God, with us. To say that we love you and to worship you and to give you our praises and to have you give us peace that passes all understanding. As we focus on your coming, but we also focus on the cross, we know, Lord, 
that the victory is yours. And by the victory being yours, it is also ours. And we can say hallelujah, amen to that. Thank you, Lord, so much for the way that you've blessed us and for being with us this morning. And as we want to shout it from the mountaintops this morning, how much we love you, I pray, Lord, that you continue to bring us joy in this season. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. 